UNB with you. This is Brother Elmar from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church addressing you live from the studios of Radio Easter River here in Cape Town, South Africa. We do uh, de- apologize for the delay in the broadcast this morning, but once again we are grateful to be tuned in and to just come into your home, into your car or wherever you are tuned in from. Maybe you're tuning in from your business, maybe you're tuning in from a prison cell, maybe you're tuning in from wherever in the world you are. May the Lord just bless you and may He be with you is our prayer. Now, if for those of you that have your Bibles ready, you can turn with me please to the book of Titus. Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. The Bible says, Looking for that blessed hope, And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we want to speak this morning about the blessed hope. Yes, the blessed hope of the church. And that is the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this is something that we are looking for. Jesus promised in John chapter 14 from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I am done preparing this place, I will come back and I will receive you. So that you may also be where I am. Hallelujah. So Jesus made a promise to his disciples and that promise is valid not just for the 12 disciples that he was addressing but it is valid to all the disciples of Jesus Christ throughout all the ages. It is valid for all the church of Jesus Christ. It is a promise for the Christian and that promise is the return of Christ. And that is what we are looking for, that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And here the Bible makes it very plain that Jesus Christ is the great God and that he is our Savior. The Bible says in John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God and then it says in verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us hallelujah that is who Jesus Christ is he is the great God the God that became flesh and dwelt among us first Timothy 3 verse 16 the Bible says and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached on unto the world, taken up into glory. Colossians 2 verse 9, it says, In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus was speaking in John chapter 14 to one of his disciples that posed a question and said, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus answered and said, Philip, I've been so long with you and you have not known me. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how can you still ask, show us the Father? Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1 says that he is the image of the invisible God. God is spirit and those that worship him must worship him in truth and spirit. But the same God that was spirit, the same God as immortal, the same God as invisible, became visible in Jesus Christ. And whosoever has seen Jesus Christ has seen God himself manifested in the flesh. And this is what the church is looking forward to. They are looking to the appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Paul was addressing this letter to Timothy or to Titus. And Titus was Paul's other son in the faith. Now we know that Paul did not have any biological children and he also never entered into marriage. But we know that he dedicated his entire life for the sake of the gospel. But there were two people that he addressed as his son in the faith. The first was Timothy and then the second was Titus. And Titus, he says in chapter 1 
in verse 4, to Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Hallelujah. So this letter was addressed to his son, Titus, his son in the faith. And this chapter is about the guidelines for Christian living. And this is how a Christian should love. A Christian should love with that expectation that Jesus will come again as he has promised. And this coming of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus is really what the Christian is looking forward to. And as Christians, we should look for that. We should look for the coming of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 that Jesus will return a second time. He will appear a second time without sin unto salvation to those that look for him, for those that expect him. And that is what the blessed hope is all about. It is about an expectation. You know, the Bible teaches us about three great things. In 1 Corinthians 13, it speaks about faith, It speaks about hope and it speaks about love. And Paul says the greatest of them all is love. And we cannot overemphasize how important it is that we should love God and that we should love one another. But we also cannot bypass how important faith is because it is by grace that we are saved through faith. We are Christians today by faith. By putting our faith in Jesus Christ. So we cannot cut faith out of the picture. And we also cannot cut hope out of the picture. Love is the greatest. But I want to shift your attention this morning to hope. As the Bible speaks about the blessed hope. And hope, if we can define it from a biblical point of view. Hope is really an expectation. We read in Psalm 42 how the David said that his hope was in God. And David went through many troubles in his lifetime. But his hope was in God. He was a man of prayer that regularly sought the face of God. And his hope was in God. And when we have hope, it means that we have an expectation. Now faith, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is something that takes what God has to offer now, right now. It says now faith faith is the substance but when it comes to hope hope creates an expectation it is an expectation of a future blessing that is still to come we might not see the answer right in front of us we might not see the problem being solved in front of us but hope is really an expectation an expectation that god will do a great thing for us and this is how it was in the life of the prophet David, he was always placing his hope in God. And we should also put our hope in God, our expectation. We should come with an expectation that God will speak to us, that God will deal with us, that God will help us, that God will do something for us. We need to have hope. We see in Romans chapter 4 that Abraham, the father of faith, that Abraham against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations hallelujah now we know that god made a promise to abraham and god said that he would have a son and that son would be his heir and abraham thought to himself how it would be possible even his wife thought how would she be able to still have pleasure and conceive a child at such a high age but the bible says in romans 4 verse 18 who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be he believed in hope against hope it seemed like there was no hope how can somebody that's 75 years old still become a father how can somebody that's 65 years old still become a mother and the doctors of the day might have said that there is no hope there is no expectation you cannot expect something like that to happen because you are past that age where you are fertile and where you can reproduce but the bible says that he believed against hope 
in hope hallelujah even though there was no expectation yet he had an expectation in god his hope was in god and god promised him a son hallelujah and abram was expecting the promised son and so also the church today is expecting the son they are expecting the son of god to come hallelujah they ex- expecting him to come as the son of man hallelujah the bible says that he shall come upon the clouds of heaven just as isaac was the promised son for abraham so jesus is the promised son for us the son that will come and the bible says that he will come upon the clouds of the heaven of heaven and this is the expectation that we have we are expecting him to come it is the blessed expectation it is the blessed hope it is the rapture of the church and the bible says in first thessalonians chapter 4 It speaks about how this event will transpire, how it will happen that the blessed hope will become a reality. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4 from verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For thus we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That is the glorious hope, hallelujah. That is the blessed hope. The hope that Jesus will come and even those that have passed on will rise again and the graves will open and us that remain in our alive the bible says we shall be quickly changed in a twinkling of an eye in the moment of time at the last trumpet when the trumpet of god shall sound that's first corinthians chapter 15 god is coming hallelujah and he's coming for his own and that is the blessed hope of the church it is the rapture the rapture of the church that will take place some people say there is no rapture or there will be no rapture and they even say the word rapture is not found in the bible but if you study this passage of first thessalonians 4 and you study the greek language in which the bible was written the new testament bible paul was saying we shall be caught up together now that phrase caught up It comes from the Greek language and the Greek word there is harpazo. And harpazo means to be suddenly taken up, to be snatched away. And that is what Paul was saying when he was saying that we will be caught up. So we will be snatched away. We will be taken away suddenly. And that is where the idea of the word rapture comes from. And we see that there has been raptures before in the Bible. We see, for instance, Enoch in the book of Genesis 5. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and Enoch was no more because God took him. Hallelujah. So God raptured Enoch. God translated him. You can even read Hebrews chapter 11 where the Bible says that Enoch, before he was taken away, before he was caught up, before he was raptured, the Bible says he received a testimony that he pleased God. He received this testimony before he was translated. Translated means he was changed. Hallelujah. And that is what will happen at the rapture, the blessed hope. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We shall receive different bodies than the bodies we are currently having. Because this body is made of flesh and blood. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So this is not the body which we will be in when we enter into his presence, but we will receive a body similar to his. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 that we know not what 
we will be but we know that when he appears we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is and we see after the resurrection of jesus christ he had a resurrected body he had a glorified body and with this body we see he could even move through the door but while the door was closed the bible says in john 21 that jesus disciples were sitting on the inside out of fear for the jews they locked all the doors and then jesus appeared in their midst the door was closed but jesus had the ability to go right through the door and to be in their midst and while he was in their midst he even ate of the fish and the bread whatever they were eating he could also eat he could take in physical substance and that is the body that we will have a glorified body a resurrected body and it is that body by which we will be able to enter into the kingdom of god and this is the blessed hope now we see there was a rapture before with enoch but there was also another rapture with the prophet elijah we read in second kings chapter 2 that a, a, a there was horses and a chariot of fire that came down from heaven and then elijah the prophet got into this chariot and he was taken up into heaven without seeing death the same with enoch and so there will be people that will never taste death and they will when jesus returns they will be taken up alive hallelujah and that is how paul writes it in first corinthians 15 that we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed we shall not all die but we shall all be changed and we see that enoch did not die elijah did not die but they were taken up alive but there will also be people in the rapture that have passed on already but god will raise them up from the dead god will cause the graves to open and god will bring them back to life and they shall they shall be first and then those that are alive they shall follow them and we shall be taken up in clouds to be with the lord we see even when jesus when he died on the cross we see that many of the dead bodies of the saints became alive and they appeared unto many people in the city there's matthew chapter 27 after jesus died we see even people raising from the dead so there is another example of a rapture hallelujah and we are expecting even in our day and age that there will come a rapture a rapture when jesus returns and we shall be caught up we shall be raptured up to be with him and this is the blessed hope of the church as we read titus chapter 2 it says we are looking for that blessed hope that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ we are looking forward to that day when the lord shall come there shall be no more sorrow there shall be no more death there shall be no more heartache we shall be forever with the lord that is the greatest reward that a christian can get it is to be with christ the things of this world will cease the things of this world will pass away but to be with the lord forever is the greatest reward you know when the children of israel were taken into the promised land you, if you read the book of joshua the bible says that the land was divided in different portions for each tribe of the children of israel but when it came to the tribe of levi god said that they shall have nothing they shall have no inheritance they shall no, have no piece of land as their portion because god said i am their portion hallelujah and so it is with the christian god is his portion you can read psalm chapter 16 where david himself was saying that the lord is his portion and the part of his inheritance that is the greatest reward that we can have is to have the lord in our lives and in our hearts we know that gold and silver they will rust they will pass away they will get stolen they will get damaged and all these material goods but to have jesus is the greatest reward david says in psalm chapter 16 verse 5 the lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup thou maintainest my lot the lines are fallen unto me in a pleasant places yea i have a goodly 
heritage. Hallelujah. God is our heritage. And when the rapture takes place, when Jesus appears, that will be the greatest reward to meet the one that died for us, the one that loved us and that laid off his life voluntarily and that shed his blood so that our sins could be taken away. That is the greatest moment ever to meet him face to face. Now we walk as though in a mirror, but we shall see then, well, not with a mirror, but we shall see him as he is. We shall see him face to face. And that is something that is really a great expectation in the life of a Christian. It is the blessed hope to see Jesus Christ, to see him as he is. Now hope, as I said, is an expectation. And we see that throughout the Bible, there were people that put their hope in God. Now hope doesn't always mean that something will happen immediately, but it can so mean that it will happen, but not in your time, but in God's time. That is how hope functions. Hope is an expectation that you put in God, and we see even in the life of Abraham. God told him when he was 75 years old that you will have a son. And Abraham waited for 25 years. And Isaac was born when Abraham was a hundred. So he had this expectation in hope. He believed he, against hope. He believed in hope. And God fulfilled that promise 25 years later. Hallelujah. Even with Sarah, when God spoke, she was 65. And when she, she bore Isaac, she was 90 years old. And we see that God fulfills his word. God keeps his promise. God cannot lie. The Bible says in Numbers 23 verse 19 that God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that it should repent him. So God cannot lie. God keeps his promises. And throughout the Bible, there were other people that also put their hope in God. We see Daniel being a man of faith, a man of prayer, that sought the face of God regularly. We see him being thrown into the lion's den. They tried to find fault against him, but they couldn't. And then they devised this plan, this conspiracy against him. And they spoke to the king and said, Let no man pray to any god for a period of 30 days except to you, the king. And Daniel couldn't help. He had to obey God more than he obeyed men. And the Bible also tells us that in Acts chapter 5, that we should be more obedient to God than to men. And Daniel still prayed to God and his hope was in God. And we see him being caught in prayer not being caught doing something wrong and the bible even says this in first peter chapter 4 that if we suffer as a christian we should not be ashamed but we should glorify god in that but we should suffer as a christian not as a thief or a robber or something bad so daniel wasn't caught doing something wrong but he was caught doing something right and he was cast into the lion's den and we see him putting his hope in god and we would have thought maybe God would have, would have sent the angel before they threw him into the lion's pit. But no, God didn't. God waited until he was thrown into the lion's den. And then God even kept him inside the lion's den. And God sent his angel to shut the mouth of the lions. And that is how we see hope also coming through. He was hopeful. We see even the three Hebrew children still putting their hope in God after they were forced to worship a statue, an idol we see them nonetheless standing firm standing fast and refusing to bow down and we see them being thrown into the lines or into the, the fiery furnace and as they were being thrown into the fiery furnace we see God himself went with them in the fire and many times we would have thought but couldn't God have just prevented them from going into the fiery furnace and many times we face problems that come our way we see things coming our way and we ask but why didn't God just prevent this from happening we see this also in John chapter 11 with the death of Lazarus we see Lazarus dying now Jesus knew that Lazarus was sick because they called Jesus to say come please your friend Lazarus is sick and then Jesus waited until Lazarus died and then Jesus went. And then one of Lazarus' sisters, we see that she said to Jesus, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And many times we ask ourselves, why does God allow these 
things to happen and we see that God allowed Lazarus to die instead of God healing him we see God having something greater in mind instead of just healing him we see that God was planning to resurrect him hallelujah and resurrection is greater than healing hallelujah because when healing yes that sickness will come the sickness will go but when God gives you eternal life it is forever and men saw it from one point of view and they thought why couldn't Jesus just heal him but Jesus had something greater in mind and God also allows things to happen in our lives and sometimes we think Lord could you not have stopped this from happening why didn't you just prevent this from happening but our ways is not God's ways hallelujah Isaiah 55 the Bible says that his ways are not our ways and as heavens are higher than earth so is also God's ways higher than our ways hallelujah God knows what he is doing God knows why he allows certain things and why others not He says in Isaiah 55 verse 8 For my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts hallelujah God has a bigger plan in mind and many times God puts us in situations and he doesn't solve the problem immediately and during that time we are left with a, no other choice but to hope to hope in god and it is better to be hopeful than to be hopeless when we're facing challenges and difficulties trials tribulations temptations if as i've been speaking for the past three weeks when we face those things it is that then that we are left to just put our hope in god to just put our expectation that he will deliver us at the right time hallelujah god doesn't always come through immediately because all those things are also processes to build our character god allows trials tribulations temptations to come our way so that our character can be molded and shaped we see the apostle james writing about it in james chapter 1 where he says that how that it brings joy when we fall in all sorts of temptations just listen to this james chapter 1 he says these words my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith work of patience but let patience make a work perfect that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing Hallelujah. So that is what it brings to pass. It is like gold that is being put into an oven and being brought out perfect. And during the process of being in the oven, it is uncomfortable. It is heat, it is molding, it is bending, but you come out a perfect product. You come out the way God wants you to be. So yes, let us not lose our hope. Regardless of what we face in this life, regardless of our difficulties our troubles let us keep our hope in Jesus Christ and most importantly let us keep our hope in the blessed coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ let us pray dear lord thank you for giving us this opportunity this privilege and also this platform that we can address the community this morning and to give them a word of hope lord to put their hope in you regardless of what they're facing and also lord to put their hope in your coming when you will be a lord to take us out of this world of trouble and you will take us into your glorious presence bless each and every one that is tuned in and may your word not return unto you void but accomplish the purpose of which you sent it i ask this in jesus holy name amen now god bless you my contact number is 0787211991 0787211991 may the lord bless you and be with you until the next time in jesus holy name amen Yes, our station, our talent, our people. Tidang ragi.